And then hey, dang! Hiya, hiya, hiya! Super Tech here! It's Hammer Lung Time at D Lab. We're gonna show you how to achieve crystal selectivity. So beat your oscillator to D Lab's drone. Here we go. All right, here's the task. I have a Hammerlin HQ129X receiver. The crystal selectivity is not working. Within this little compartment is a 455KC crystal, just like this little one you see in my hand, okay? This is also a 455KC, just different case style. So what we're gonna do is verify crystal activity using my oscilloscope and an HP8601 generator. Right, so you pretty much just take your scope and you put your crystal in series. The negative leads are just tied together. So we're just sending a signal through the crystal and the scope will see that when it resonates and you get a peak. Okay, so we can do the same thing in this receiver without removing that crystal. You can test it in circuit. Let me show you how to do it. So to test the internal crystal, as they call X1, within the crystal selectivity little compartment, you don't actually have to disconnect it. Take your generator, you're going to feed the bottom side of the crystal. Your scope is going to go to the top side of that crystal. I know it's probably hard to see. If you have your switch in off, that's the 455 coming direct off of the generator. So you need to be in one of the crystal select positions then you're gonna play with the frequency of your generator now this one's old and kinda of touchy but you get the idea you're gonna see a peak come on going right by it aren't I there it is so once I get somewhat of a peak I can adjust the fine tuning on this thing and you'll see the 455 as it excites that crystal. There it is. Okay. And get a little more output. That's the 455 going through the crystal. So you'll be looking for a peak. And that is when the crystal is saying, hey, I like that signal, and I'm going to resonate on that frequency. Now, if you watch this amplitude, you see that jumping? That is not my generator. That is the crystal. So I either have an intermittent connection on the side leads, or a little crystal inside that's being harnessed might actually have a bad connection internally so that'd be no fun at all but I bet you the entire problem of this receiver and not having the phasing operation working properly is just this crystal and its connections so I plan to investigate this further but the purpose of this video was to show you how you can check this crystal for activity before you remove it from the receiver. All right, a little bit of follow-up. I removed the crystal from the receiver. And sure enough, we've got a loose lead. It looks like there's some type of a little push-in rivet. I don't know how it got that loose. The other side is not like that. So I'm gonna see if I can possibly repair this. If not, I'm gonna put in that other crystal. Well, I think I got lucky. I ended up soldering that lug direct. It looks like I got some pretty good crystal activity here. Much more powerful than what I had before, so I'm going to reinstall it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video of how to test these crystals for this vintage radio gear. You need these options because you can't buy them.